What's going on guys? Clutch here. Once again, welcome back to the channel. Today, we're talking about course play. Oh yes. You guys have been waiting for this for a while. I know there's a lot of people been waiting for this and if you uh, haven't heard of it before, well, we're gonna talk quickly about it today so you tune in at a good time. Uh, this is a new mod for Farming Sim 19. This has been available for Farming Sim 15, Farming Sim 17. I think that's it. I don't think it was before that, but anyways. A uh, very powerful mod for farming sim that uh, yeah, very customizable and very powerful. So uh, we're going to be showing you how to install it in your game right now and uh, where to find it and how to install it. And then we're also going to be going through oh, through the tunnel here, I can't see nothing. Um, what each of the different settings, what the idea is behind them and how they kind of work. Um, we're not going to go too in depth on how everything goes together yet. We need to do some testing still on all this to make sure it all works properly and uh, go through the exact process because there is quite a bit to it to be perfectly honest now be forewarned it is in beta still so there's a lot of things that are still in flux and being tested and it doesn't work with all mods there are some problems with some mods but uh, still if you want to give it a try maybe on a fresh profile well this is the time to do it i guess anyways guys let's dig into it pitter patter clutch simulations All right, guys, so we are in my download, se uh, download section. This is the file you will download once uh, you go to the link that I've included in the description below. Of course, if you want to uh, join along and download this file, go ahead. So this here is a file you'll end up. It's a zip file, FS19 course play 6. Um, I've just gone ahead and created a new folder. And this here is basically that new folder. You can see the, the path right there. Just is going to be for just simplicity's sake, essentially, that's all. Um, once again, just before warned, guys, this is in beta still. So if you're planning on using course play, I highly recommend just going from a brand new game save, not one you currently already have in use, and especially not one with any mods, just in case I would hate for you to lose your game save on this. So that's my disclaimer on that. We're not going to say anything else about that. <laughs> All right. So uh, let's open up the zip file here. So FS19 course play 6, and we'll see what we got there. So inside, we've got two files, the Mac OS and FS19 course play. I'm not going through the Mac OS stuff. Uh, you can take a look if you have a Mac. There are some instructions on the, uh, the site f with the, along with the, uh, the download file. So if you are looking for those, that's where you'll find some instructions on that. As far as FS19 course play, what you'll need to do now is, what I do at least, is bring out all the files that are inside. So you've got all the files in here. The easiest way to do this essentially though is just take it out of your uh, unzip folder your win or winware for that for what i'm using it for and just drag the whole folder over to this new new folder perfect so now we have this other folder that's actually inside here we can go in and take a look and all i'm doing here is i'm going to select everything that's in this folder and add to archive perfect make sure that the folder new archive name is fs19 course play 6 and you want that to be a zip file so this is all being done with winware if you have some other kind of a uh, unzip file program, then by all means, it should work as well. But this is what I'm using. So I'm archiving this and uh, I'm just going to hit OK. Done. So here we go. So this here is the file that I now need to add to my mold fo mo uh, mod folder. None of these other files matter anymore. Everything is included in this, uh, this zip file. So from here, I'm just simply opening up my mods folder. This is my uh, Farming Sim 19 mod folder. I'm just going to take course play six and drop it in. It is done. This folder can now be kiboshed. So we can go back to one, uh, go back to downloads, delete, see you later. Now we have course play six ready to rock in farming sim 19. Let's go uh, take a look. And now once we are in the farming sim 19 mods DLC uh, list, you will find your course play six. Uh, if you have a ton of mods like me, it's under C, or at least it should be with whatever the username, because that's the username that's been used. You can just obviously activate that and start your game. Now, once your game starts to load, you will see that a course play icon will pop up here right when it boots in. So we'll watch for that. And it just kind of scans your game save and it should pop up now. There we go. And that was it. Now we know we have course play, um, to confirm, we can go to any vehicle that's on the map. I'll go to that one there. Simply right click our mouse and we now have course play control. So base settings for course play is the right click of the mouse will bring it up. 
and now I right click again to have control of the camera. If I right click, the mouse is free again. I can still move it at times. I don't seem to think it's as it predictable as it should be. If you want, you can just get rid of that as well. All right, so that's all good and dandy. We've got course plane now installed. What does it do exactly? Well, you've heard me complain, and I'm sure you've probably had some complaints about the hired workers. And really, this really takes the, I guess, the decision making out of the hired working. If there was any decision making, it would take it out of their hands completely. This allows you to really control what they do um, and how they all work, essentially. Um, yeah, so. For instance, let's start with, uh, this is just a standard setup right now. Um, it's going to look at the field size. So if I hit this calculate current fields edge, this field I've purchased, and now it's, it's decided to look around the field to see how big it is. And it's going to take into account uh, any corners or any objects on the edge as well that uh, may be a problem. So that's always good. We can save that. It's already been saved for me. It's all good. Save it as one, sure. Overwrite field path one. So we've got our first field saved in here. Um, now we have a couple options down below and we're gonna go through all those as well, it's slowly here. The first one I'm looking at is just simply a um, plot course A to, to B. So that's all this does, you can see down here, essentially I think that says A and B over here. That's what I had in the intro with the truck driving down the road. I drove a course, it drops cr uh, breadcrumbs down and then it leaves that path there for you. So you, whenever the vehicle is needs to run that course, you can just tell it to go and run it, and it'll go from A to B and stop. That's all there's to it. Very simple, um, very useful for certain vehicles, but it's just a very, very, very simple path creating uh, method. All right, so once we've calculated our fields, uh, fields edge path, like I was talking about, you're going to get these options all populated at the bottom. And we already, we already talked about the um, point A to point B course. That's all great and dandy, but um, there's not all, it's, it's not as useful as this program can possibly be. Uh, one of the more useful ones, and I should mention that does change depending on what type of vehicle you're driving. So since we're in a tractor, we have a different set of tools than you will in a harvester. Um, so the first one, and one of the major ones I would say, is the field work. So you can see actually down at the bottom here, kind of in the bottom left of this uh, program, it pops up, says type field work. So that's going to pop populate now, and you see the menus kind of change as we went through this. So field work essentially is you're plowing, cultivating, uh, yeah, you know that kind of stuff. So we've got field work now selected. Um, we've already done our field edge path, so that's all good. And what will this will allow us to do is essentially have a path around the field that, even if there's corners or obstructions, it's going to go around and know that and how to set the field up and, and go through it. If you have multiple tractors on the same field, it will take that into account as well. Um, you may have to set some of that up, but anyways. So uh, from here, we can go into and change some of the settings if you want. I'll just go quickly go through them. So turn speed, field speed, you can change all these as you see fit. Um, waypoints, yes. Uh, driving settings, we're not gonna worry about those. And there we go. So this one here is one of the main ones, course uh, course generation. Um, I've already got it set to field one. So this was field one that we set up. You may want to change that to the number, whatever maybe the field number that you're in. Um, that was just when we set the current field edge. That is the file that showed up there. Uh, you may have to double check and make sure this gets set. Uh, working with is the size of the implement we're using, as you can see. And we're starting in the southwest corner. You can see the rest of them here. Um, the big thing with this here, so if we go into our other settings here, we'll bring up the menu, and now you have advanced course generation settings. So this goes in a little more in depth. I'm not gonna go too into this one, guys, but you can see one of the big ones here that I like to mess around with is the headlands. So you're sure you've heard of people say that, you know what, you've always gotta do your headlands. Always do your headlands when you're plowing, cultivating, seeding, whatever. This will allow you to go and do some, some options on your headlands. Now, I haven't played with all the options yet, but let's just go around and it can say, you know what, let's do five headlands just for fun. Uh, it's clockwise, uh, started working on headland passes. Yeah, there we go, done. So you can change these settings as you see fit. When you're ready to go, generate field course. Bam. Now you can see the course that's been plotted out for me. I'm starting here, I was gonna work all the way around and then you should go back and forth in the middle. So if we go back to our tool, go back to the uh, course play control, drive course, and we're off. Unfortunately, the tool didn't go down. There he goes. I don't know why he started there, but he did. Anyways, so he's gonna now do some laps. We can go and uh, do whatever we want, and he's gonna take care of that. 
I currently don't have the worker set on. There's an option right when you log in, since this is the second time I've logged in, on whether they get paid or not. I think it's like $1,500 an hour you can <laughs> pay your workers. I just disabled that. Uh, it's up to you if you want that to be on or not. But there is a price tag potentially you can have that on. I'm not sure if you can do it on later on or not, but uh, there's an option for that. All right, and then down at the bottom here, it's going to give you a readout on the course length, on how long it's going to take. Oh, interesting. I don't know what he hit there. Oh, that's weird. All right. So, like I said, there's a few bugs that I have not figured out fully yet on why that showed up there. I don't know if I missed something on one of the settings, uh, but it's there. <laughs> Anyways, let's move on to some of the other ones. So, like I said, we were talking now. We've done... Uh, field work, we've done the point A to point B. Let's go jump over to one of the harvesters and take a look at what that one has. All right, so we've set our A to B option um, right here. You saw that. Now let's move into something a little bit different. So like I said, between different uh, vehicles, you're probably going to get some different options here. Um, you'll notice on this, on the harvester, we no longer have the seeding option. So this was the seeding and fertilizing, I believe, seeding fertilizing option. We don't obviously don't have that available to us anymore. So we have A to B, and this one here is field work. So this one here is definitely probably one of the, the bigger options, uh, one of the, the more useful options with the tool. Um, obviously to start with, we should, should have uh, calculated our field edge. Uh, why am I not seeing that? I should be able to see something there. Calculate field edge. Maybe I've already done it. Oh, you know what, I've already done it, that's for sure, because I wouldn't even have this option if I didn't. Anyways, so you'll want to make sure you uh, calculate our field edge to, to get all these icons to populate. Uh, once we're there, we have a couple different options we can go look at. So you can look at your turn speed, your field speed, all this fun stuff you can change depending on what you want to do. Uh, I'm not going to worry about any of those settings. or just settings, uh, land offsets, yes. All right, this one here is a field edge. Now, the other field was field one. A field two, I don't know if I've put this one in by accident or not, but that's giving you the option. Working width is the width of the, um, the header or the implement. You can change that if you decide to go a little bit more potentially. Because um, so you don't have as much of an offset. Sometimes it, it takes a little less than, or a little bit more than it needs to, and you might be able to get away with going more or less, depending on what you need. Um, but the nice thing about this, and you'll see this here, headlands. We can change how uh, the headlands work on this one. So it's going to do uh, three, and then go to this. You can also go in and take a look inside the menu. Now everyone says do your headlands whenever you're hiring workers so that it sets boundaries on your field. Now this field here typically you hire a worker they would just go back and forth like this right. Um, so we have our headlands set there's a couple different options here I haven't messed around with all of these too much yet but around headlands passes three clockwise yep looks all good. Let's see what they're gonna do once we generate this field. Boom. So you can see now he's gonna go all around 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 and then starting to do zigzags back and forth until finally ending right there. And you can see it starts at green and goes to red. That's the path that he's going to take. Boom. Uh, we can go back now and tell it drive course. You can see the little icons popped up on screen for us there. And now our worker is just simply going to do that path that we asked it to do. Fantastic. So that there, once again, more field work, guys. So that one there, you can use, obviously, with plows, with um, cultivators. You can see behind me here, I had him do the headlands quickly on that. I'm not sure why he's not doing the center. Must have had a settings messed up on there. But he's done all the way around for me, which is kind of cool. So we'll see what this uh, harvester does. If he does laps or if he ever gets to the center, I'm not sure if we'll get to that point or not. You can see off in the distance, actually, right there. That's the stop sign, so that's where he is going to end at the very end of this. Um, so we do have some other options we can d quickly discuss, and I don't think I can bring them up in this. No, because it'd be right there. We'll uh, go take a look over at the truck here, and uh, we'll go see what other options we have in there. I'll just discuss most of them, because I don't have the tools to, uh, to test them out quite yet. So let's go over there and take a look. All right, guys, so now we're back over. We're in uh, a semi-truck here. We've, as you can see, we've got uh, pretty much the same options as we had with the, what is it, the tractor. Um, I'm a little bit surprised we have the fertilized seeding option. That should be grayed out in my mind. Anyways, so uh, we did talk about, briefly, like I said, the point A to point B. Uh, we talked about field work. Um, the fertilized seeding, we did briefly discuss. The one difference with the fertilized seeding you'll have is that you'll have an option for reloading on how that all works. Um, the one thing with, uh, when you're dealing with trucks, anything that's going to be offloading, you're going to have three different options for that, I guess. Uh, first of all, this one here is kind of designed around picking up 
uh, grain from your silo and transporting it to the sell point. So you'll do a, a run with it. You'll do one run and drop down breadcrumbs, um, cookie crumbs, I like to call it. And uh, yeah, you'll drop off those in the path that you plan on having them take. You'll do it once, set up the drop off point and the pickup points, and the, uh, the AI worker will then just go and continuously run that path. So it's a very simple way of mitigating that, and that's all there is to it. So just a simple path of pickup and sell, and it's done. Um, this one here, so this one's the combine, the C, and that's going to X, obviously. So it's called the combi. Um, so this one here will be picking up items from a combine or multiple combines on a field and then bringing them back to a sell point or a certain de pre-designated area. Now I'm thinking, I don't have any sell points on this field yet set up. So typically you would set this by, once again, setting breadcrumbs to your silo back and then back to a staging area. So we're in park right now, it could be a staging area. And then this would go back to the silo. It would have set for drop off point and then the truck would automatically come back to this point and wait for this harvester to be ready to go. Now, some of the options here, we'll leave this up. Uh, I've already calculated the field stuff. I don't think I need to worry about that because we're not in the field. Uh, let's see here. So I've already set the harvester, so you can set automatic search and go by field. If you have multiple harvesters on, you could do this. You could set by how many fields you had or how many uh, harvesters you had on that field. It would go to a whole bunch of them. Or if you just go to manual and select the one harvester you want to dedicate it to. Um, and then you've got your speeds once again. And that is all. That's the only ones you have to worry about. Now, like I said, I would typically should have a, a, a path set. So I'm going to just start recording. I hope this works and then stop recording. We'll see if this one works and then tell it to drive the course. Now, this harvester is ready to go. I'm just wondering, there he goes. I didn't touch anything. He's going to go unload him and then drive back to this location. I think <laughs> in theory he should. We'll see what his path is. Um, I find their paths are a little bit rough. They can kind of go wherever they want. It seems like they just choose a path and they do whatever they want with it. Um, the other options that we have down there, there was one that does that allows for the uh, kind of the opposite of this. We'll do the combine. We'll come and drop off um, its load at a, at a uh, drop location, a truck, or even a silo for that matter. So it will do what it wants uh, when it gets full. Um, there's also a like a fill and empty shovel mode. So think more of emptying a silo. Uh, it can. Uh, go and pick stuff up, I believe. So I haven't messed with that one at all yet. And same with, uh, I believe there's one for inside of a silo for packing. So it will go back up and down and pack. There's a couple other ones oh, inside a bunker, I should say. So those are the ones that I've messed with briefly and I'm aware of from Farming Sim 17 and 19, or 17 and 15, sorry. Uh, there's quite a few other ones, but it is a very powerful tool, as you guys can no doubt see. A lot of options here to see uh, how this all works in the next little bit. So I'll be playing around this for a bit, guys. Uh, stay tuned, and uh, yeah, we'll make definitely make sure we dive into course play a little bit more in depth. <laughs> Let's see if this guy actually picks this up properly. And it's fun to watch, actually, because they will. it is set up um, to pick up the truck. Once it hits 50%, it will start heading that way to pick up the load and uh, then drive off at a certain percent as well. So we'll see how he does here on this one. Perfect. And automatically starts moving, that is great. I, I don't know why he missed the whole corner on me. Oh, we had soft edges on, that's right. <laughs> Anyways, it's a cool, this is a cool quick little tutorial, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, if you did, give me a, a big thumbs up on that one. If this served absolutely no purpose for you, well, go hit that smash that down like button. Um, as always, guys, if you're not a subscriber, make sure you subscribe. We're going to be diving into this a little more, so I'm sure you might want to know more, more information on it. And other than that, guys, I will see you next time. This is Clutch. Over and out.